Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this video we're going to cover the use of message boxes in Excel VBA. The things we'll cover in this video will tell you all you need to know to start displaying messages on screen while your programs are running. So we'll start with an explanation of the basic message box function and then show you how you can go into customize message boxes using the various parameters. We'll show you a couple of useful techniques for working with messages, including how to concatenate strings and how to add multiple lines to a message box. We'll also show you a couple of ways to get values into a message box, so from things like functions and also sell values from your spreadsheet. The final part of the video shows you how you can ask users simple questions using message boxes, how to store the results using variables, and then how to test the result of your message. So let's get started. A message box in VBA is a convenient way to display information on screen while your programs are running. To make one appear is really straightforward. You need to reference the message box function, and you can make that appear in the IntelliSense list if you press Control and Space on the keyboard. Following that, type in another space, and then you'll see an argument list or a parameter list appear, showing you the five different parameters for a message box. There's only one compulsory one though, and that's the one called prompt. The reason you can tell it's compulsory is because it's not stored in a set of square brackets like all the other ones are. So the prompt is simply the text that appears on the message box itself. There's an unwritten rule in programming where you're always supposed to make your first message say hello world, um, but I find that really tedious. So let's put something else um, in a set of square, uh, double quotes. Let's put, oh I don't know, I like pizza. Um, it's not that much more exciting than hello world really is it, but at least it's true. If I hit enter then at the end of that instruction, all I need to do now is execute the subroutine by clicking the play button or hitting the F5 key on my keyboard. And when I do that, my message box appears on screen with the prompt that I've specified. Clicking OK simply ends the subroutine and takes me back to the VB editor. Now there are several things that we can do to customize our message. For instance, we can change the title that's displayed and we can even display different icons next to the prompt. To make that work, we need to head to the end of the line of code we've already written, type in a comma to make the parameter list appear, and then look at the other parameters we have. So you can see that we've moved on to the buttons parameter. Um, it's a bit of a misleading name actually, we're not going to change the buttons at this point. The buttons parameter also lets you change what symbol appears on the message. So there are things like VB critical, which displays a red circle with a white cross. There's something called VB exclamation, which is a yellow warning triangle with an exclamation mark in it. There's something called VB question a little bit further down, which uh, displays a question mark symbol on the message. The one that we're going to use is the one called VB information, and it simply displays an, uh, a blue circle with an I in the middle. So we'll have a VB information symbol. Then once we've got that, we'll have another comma, and that takes us to the title argument. And here I'm just going to put in another string of text, so I'm going to say food message. Not that that's particularly exciting, but it'll just be enough to demonstrate how it works. So those are the two extra arguments provided. If I then run the subroutine again, try that again, run the subroutine, there we go, you can see the customizations we've made to the message. We have the food message title, and a bit more obviously we have the information symbol displayed. I just wanted to make a quick mention of a technique you'll often see used when you pass multiple arguments to a function like a message box. Sometimes it can be difficult to interpret which piece of information, which argument is being passed to which parameter. So rather than just listing out your arguments in a comma separated list, it's possible to name the parameters as you give information to them. So to do that, all you would need to do is in front of the argument, type in the name of the parameter, so in this case it would be prompt, followed by a colon and an equal sign. And you would then subsequently do that to each of the other arguments. So in front of the VB information, we knew that that was the buttons argument or parameter. And then again, in front of the, the food message, that was the title parameter title colon equals. It obviously requires a little bit more effort to do and it makes your code I guess a bit longer but it can be worthwhile if you're not entirely sure which value gets passed to which parameter. It's a nice way to remind yourself. I have to admit in the real world I don't tend to do this myself but just it's just so you know that it's an option. Another technique that you're likely to need when you're using message boxes is a technique called concatenation, or simply joining bits of text together. So I'm going to write another subroutine that displays a different message on screen. This, can, this one's going to be called date message. And what it's going to do is display to the user a phrase which says, today's date is, 
and then it will show today's date. So to make that work again, I need to start with the message box, and all I'm going to do is specify the prompt. But the prompt will be made of two different parts. The phrase, uh, the date is, and that's a string literal, so it's going to close in a set of double quotes. And then what I want to do is join to the end of that the actual date. And there's a function in VBA that will do that for me. The function is called date. But to join it together with what I've already done, I need to use the ampersand symbol, which is shift and the number seven on your keyboards usually. All I need to do then is type in the function that I want to use, which is called date, hit enter, and then if I run that subroutine, we should see that those two bits of information are joined together. Hopefully you'll notice the importance of using a space within my message there. If I click OK to go back to the code, if I didn't have this space within the string, then when I run the subroutine, I don't get a space in the message either. So it's important, whatever you put into the double quotes, it's important to understand that it appears exactly as you have typed it in including any spaces. You can join together or concatenate as many different elements of a phrase that you like. So let's say for instance that after I've displayed the message to do with the date, I want to tell the user what the weather's like. So after the date function, I can type in another ampersand and then join on another piece of information. So in this case, I'll open a set of double quotes. Uh, there'll be a full stop after the date. And then I'm gonna start another sentence. The weather is and well, I'm in near Manchester in the UK, which the weather's pretty much always rainy here, so um, it's a fairly good bet that I can say the weather is rainy and that'll be true. So if I then run that subroutine again, I get my second piece of information, or in fact, sorry, technically the third piece of information, isn't it? The date is, is the first bit, then the actual date, and then this literal phrase starting with the full stop there and ending with the full stop there. When you have slightly longer messages to display, it can be useful to separate out the message onto different lines. So let's say in this example, for instance, I want to show the, the, the date information on the first line and the weather information on the second. What I actually need to do to make that work is concatenate in a character code that inserts a new line within my phrase. So let's just do a quick little tweak here where we end the first sentence with that full stop. So the date is followed by today's date, then a full stop, then what I need to do is join in, concatenate, a character code. There's a bit of choice here about which character code you actually use. You'll find them all if you press the control and space keyboard shortcut. A common but slightly old fashioned one, but you'll, you'll still see this used quite often, is one called VBCRLF, which stands for Visual Basic Carriage Return Line Feed. It kind of harks back to the, the days of typewriters where you, when you reach the end of a line you had to flip the carriage all the way back to the left hand side and then feed a line in the piece of paper. There's a much more modern equivalent of that which is the one that I tend to use myself. It's called VB New Line and I think that's a lot easier to understand as well. So VB New Line, another ampersand and then I need to make sure that I begin the next sentence with a double quote as well. So I can just quickly squeeze this across so you can see the full sentence. So there's the first part of the message, the date is, then the function called date, and then a full stop, then a new line character, and finally the last part of my message. So the end result of all of this, if I run the subroutine, is that I get my message split onto two separate lines, which is exactly what we wanted. As well as getting the information for a message from a combination of literal strings and functions and other keywords, you can also get data from the spreadsheet to be displayed in a message. If I quickly switch back into Excel, we're now a good old standard movies database again. What I'd like to do is maybe write a routine which selects the cell in column B here and then displays a message which says, well, basically tells me what release date that film has. So if I go back to the Visual Basic Editor and then write another subroutine, I'm going to call this movie message. What we can do is display a message box. Oh, sorry, first of all, we need to select a cell, don't we? So let's say range B7, uh, arbitrarily, dot select. And then we can display a message which says active cell dot value. So that will show me the value of whichever cell I have just selected. Then I would like to concatenate the literal phrase was released on. And then another piece of information, I want to refer to the value of the cell that is one to the right of the active cell. So active cell again, dot offset, zero comma one, this is one column across to the right, dot value. 
so that entire message should read if I run the subroutine because I've selected cell B7 it tells me the results for The Hobbit An Unexpected Journey if I click OK, if I change the cell that I selected in the first place, let's say B12 for instance, then run the subroutine again, I get a different message picking up values from different cells again. So far we've only used a message box to display information on screen, but it is possible to use messages to get inputs from the user as well. To show you how that works, I'm going to extend our first subroutine to also ask the user a question. So after the message telling us that we like Peter, I'm going to display another message box which asks a question. Uh, do you like Peter? I'm not going to bother naming my parameters this time, I'm just going to jump straight into the, the values that I'm going to pass to them. Um, so that's the prompt. I'm also going to display a VB question symbol on the message and I'm also going to change the title of the message as well so I'm going to make that say food question. Okay so if I run that subroutine we'll see two messages in succession the first bit of information I like pizza and subsequently the question do you like pizza? Hopefully you can see the obvious problem with the user being able to respond correctly to this though. By default a message box only shows an OK button so we need to extend this so it shows yes and no buttons. So I'm going to click OK to get back to my code and then head back to the buttons parameter. Now we've already passed it the VB question uh, symbol. What I also want to do is show VB yes no buttons and to do that you need to type in a plus symbol after the first item and then choose another one from this list. The one I'm going to go for is VB yes no. Well, you'll get, get, you'll, hopefully you'll get an idea of the other types of things you can see. VB yes no cancel, retry and cancel, OK only, etc. So the one we're going to go for is yes and no. If we run that subroutine again now, we can see that on the second message we have yes and no buttons. So we're getting closer. The last problem we've got to overcome is how we actually get the result. How do we store which button the user clicks? Because at this point it makes no difference which button gets clicked. My program doesn't store it anywhere. Probably the best way to store the result of a message box is to use a variable. Now we've created a video on variables previously so we're not going to go into too much detail here. What we will do is head to the top of the subroutine and declare a variable called button clicked which is going to hold the result of our message box. What I then need to do is decide on which data type gets stored in the variable. And I've actually got a couple of choices here. The one I'm going to go for is called VB message box result. And this is an example of something called an enumeration. And all an enumeration is, is a list of numbers where each number has a textual description. So if I choose VB message box result, just to show you what I'm allowed to, to store in that variable, click on the word message box press the F1 key on your keyboard to launch the help system. That should take you directly to the message box function help page. Scroll down a bit on the help page to get to the return values sections. These are the values that the message box can give back to us. And you'll see there are two different things that get, that get returned. There's a list of numbers, one through seven, but also corresponding to the numbers is a literal description. And the ones we're gonna get are VB yes or VB no. So I could have declared a variable that was a byte or an integer or some kind of number and got the numerical result. What I've done is got the result of um, oh, sorry, the value of, a, of an enumeration, so the VB message box result. Okay, last stage to actually get the result stored is to extend the line which displays our message. At the front of this I need to type in my variable name, button clicked equals. You'll see one of the great advantages of having an enumeration is that rather than having to remember or even guess what numbers correspond to which button, you can actually see the IntelliSense list appears to show you exactly what options are valid. We're not going to pick one from that list at this point. All we need to do now is to enclose our parameter list in a set of parentheses. Can I just show you that if I click away from this line, I currently have a syntax error. When you're storing the results of a message, you need to enclose its argument list in a set of parentheses. It's a syntax rule in VBA. Essentially, when the message box appears at the right-hand side of an assignment operator, an equal sign, the argument list needs to be enclosed in parentheses. So, nearly there, all we've got to do now is test which button was clicked. So we'll use a simple if statement to check which button was clicked. So we can say if button clicked 
equals, and again, we get the other uh, benefits of having used this particular data type, the enumeration. I'm going to say if the button click does VB yes, then I'm going to display a different message. Uh, we're going to have another slightly longer video about if statements, by the way. If you're not that familiar with if statements yet, we will explain that in a lot more detail in a future video. Um, but all I'm going to do is say if the button click was yes, then I'll display a message box which says, um, yep, pieces are great. Um, not particularly brilliant message to display, but there we go. And I'm going to display, let's see, VB exclamation on the message as well. Otherwise, so there's only one of the choice. If it wasn't yes, it must have been no. So if the user had clicked no, a different message box, which says, um, why not? Pizzas are great. And on this message, I'm going to display a VB critical symbol, just mainly so that you can see the, the different range of symbols you can see on a message. Make sure to end the if statement and then run the subroutine one last time. I like pizza. Great. Do you like pizza? If I click yes, I'll get a message saying yes, pizzas are great. And that's the exclamation symbol. If I run it one more time, choosing no this time, I'll get a slightly different message. So that's a, clearly an invalid choice. Pizzas are great. So that's the basics of using message boxes. Hopefully you found the video useful. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.